We're here at Rapid TCT 2019, and along with 3D printers and materials, you also need wonderful accessories to supplement and make your experience better in 3D printing. And here are some examples of some awesome people we found at Rapid TCT 2019 that may supplement your 3D printing experience. Right here on 3D Printing Nerd. I'm here at the Fabrisonic booth, and this is Mark, and they have a crazy technology to talk about. Hey, Mark. Hey, thanks for stopping. We appreciate you stopping by. Um, yeah, our technology is 3D printing of metal without powder and without melting. So no heat, no powder, you can actually 3D print metal? Yes, sir. What we're doing is taking thin foils of metal and we're welding those together with sound waves. And that, uh, it's called ultrasonic welding. It's been around since the 1960s. All we've done is taken this 1960s technology and put 10 kilowatts of power in it. Because who doesn't want more power? Because it's so low temperature, we can do some really unique things. First, we don't have to have any fancy environment. This is happening in open air. The machine behind us is actually an off-the-shelf CNC mill, in this case a Tormach, where we've added our welding technology to that. Because uh, we're not melting, we can do things like weld dissimilar metals. So layer one can be aluminum, layer two can be copper, layer three could be titanium, all in the same part. You can put together dissimilar metals that will actually create a part that's per spec of a customer. Exactly, it's, it's, it's right to exactly where they want the material in the part. That is, that is cool, and without heat, and without, I mean, it's just a normal environment, we're talking, well, I see NASA here. This is perfect for something like space because you don't have to deal with heat or exhaust or you're just using sound waves. Exactly. The real low temperature is the key. Not only can we do dissimilar metals, we can do embedded electronics. <laughs> um, so we do a lot of things where we'll drop circuitry into parts, drop uh, active elements into a part, and then that's buried in there for the rest of the life of that part. Think Internet of Things, think health monitoring. Oh, so you could put delicate things within the print and they won't be harmed? Exactly, we can put delicate things anywhere in the part. Um, we're actually talking to someone right now about putting explosives into parts. Um, there's because lots, why not? Because, because we're engineers, why not? Um, so this machine again is a hybrid machine, so it has both additive and subtractive. So we use the foils to print near that shape, close to the shape that we want, and then we use the mill to get the exact shape. So it's all, if you know G-code, you already know how to run the machine. Oh, and is this a milled part right here? Yeah, so this is an example. Uh, this is a heat exchanger we built for NASA JPL. It's for an interplanetary mission. Um, and as you can see, we've integrated cooling channels into the structure. So we took 32 parts that were all kind of milled, drilled, and then bolted together. We turned that into one part. Because we were able to integrate that, we got rid of 30% of the mass, and we got 30% better performance. And by the way, we turned it around in two weeks. Well, this lends itself to the discussion of uh, uh, building and designing for additive because less parts, less material, but just the, I mean, the same strength and the same functionality, right? Exactly. The biggest thing in additive is not that you can build a part quick. It's that you can take three or four different functions that previously were separate parts and integrate that into one part. That's where the w real win is for additive. So then I, I have to ask, what yeah. does technology like this retail for? If a company sure. wanted this, yeah. how much money are they going to put out for it? Sure. So we have several different size machines. This is our entry model. Um, we've got a show special today for 200K. Um, so th that's an integrated mill with welding for 200K. I mean, uh, I, I do a lot of consumer-based stuff, yeah. and so I don't, I don't know the price ranges of yeah. things, but I would imagine uh, getting a solution like this for 200K for a company that needs something like this, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, we, we think it's a pretty good deal. Some of our larger machines get into millions, and those, you know, you really got to have a, a decent, solid business case. It takes years to get financing for. 200K, that's a lot less signatures. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you taking some time with me, and I hope you have a really good rest of Rapid with this awesome technology. Fantastic. It was great talking to you. Thank you, sir. Rapid wouldn't be complete without standing next to Luke, this tall drink of water right next to me. Luke is with Bofa, and he is going to tell me why their filtration system is awesome and something you might need. Hey, Luke. Hey, Joel. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. So, uh, I want to show you why filtration is important in 3D printing. As you may or may not know, there are a couple of things that happen when you print with filament. First, you have VOCs, or gases, the things you smell. And the second thing is uh, ultrafine particles. Uh, so things you don't see, you don't smell, and you don't know they're there. But if you do inhale them, it can cause some uh, serious problems with your, with your health. So, uh, our uh, filters uh, can be attached to uh, a printer uh, like this, or just by having a cone come over it or to, or to the side. And via this uh, box with a pump, uh, it will filter out the big particles, 
uh, the gases and the ultrafine particles and return fresh air to your uh, workspace or in, back into your machine. Oh, and the important part, though, is returning the air to the, to the environment, right? Right. right. So uh, on, you could return the air to your environment to breathe fresh air, or in this situation, for example, you want to keep the temperature of the print at a stable uh, level. So what we're doing here is we're circulating the air around so that the temperature doesn't change uh, by much and we can keep a higher temperature to enable a good print. Oh, okay, so if you're doing ABS, peak, ultim, something that's a much higher temperature where you need that, that consistent hotter temperature within the container, then this can enable that. Exactly, that, 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 that's the point. And you can, uh, if you wish, you can have a higher temperature or start with a higher temperature. You can pre preheat a little bit so that it, it makes it a better print. But also, if you're printing PLA and you're worried about the temperature being too high, you see these enclosures have a, have a gap in the back that allows the air to, to, to exchange a little bit to, to keep the, the heat creep from happening. So we're talking about not just ABS, not just polycarb, we're talking about PLA as well? Yeah, so uh, it's a little, little known fact uh, that PLA, although it's eco-friendly and biodegradable uh, and doesn't produce gases, it does still produce my, uh, ultrafine particles, which is dangerous to your health. Kinga. So you may think that you're doing a good thing for yourself by, by buying PLA, but you're never thinking about the things you don't see, which are the microparticles that you are inhaling. So now, I've seen machines that have uh, a HEPA filter on the back. Right. How, how is that different from the, the BOFA solution? Right, so first of all, uh, a HEPA filter does not filter gases. It may remove the smell, but it's, it's not good enough to filter uh, gases. So what we have here is an activated carbon filter made from coconut shells. Uh, it's, uh, it's about three to four inches thick, and it allows uh, the gas to pass through and it gets absorbed into the carbon. Uh, the carbon requires, uh, the, the gas requires about a 0.1 seconds of time to go through to absorb. Okay. So if you have a very thin layer of carbon, uh, you may be able to use it for one or two cycles, but after a while it will saturate and you will lose the, the, the capability. So that's why we have a thick layer of carbon that allows the filter to work for up to a year, uh, removing the gases. So the HEPA is nice to remove the ultrafine particles. Kinga. Uh, but it will not remove the gases. And if the HEPA is small, it will also uh, clog up faster, so then it will stop working. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bad idea to have a very small filter, unless you really want to exchange it over and over and over again. Here you have peace of mind for a year, you don't have to worry about it. So then this peace of mind for a year, what, uh, what would someone pay for something like this? What's the cost? So uh, the cost, including the enclosure, is about $1,000. Uh, it, we have some smaller units in, in case you have a smaller budget, but we really recommend uh, for the peace of mind, like I said, is, is to get the proper unit that will last you a year, uh, and that way you don't have to worry about any of the health effects of uh, 3D printing. You can enjoy having fun with the 3D printer without any worries. So then schools, engineering houses, industrial applications, this sort of filtration is extremely important for not just the lifetime of the machine, and the environment, but the lifetime of the humans operating it? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's, it's, it's a good solution for everybody, but specifically schools. Uh, kids are developing, uh, their bodies are developing, and you don't want to cause any uh, problems with the development by, by inhaling particles and gases. Uh, and for any kind of work environment, if you're sitting in a lab for eight hours, 10 hours, or if you're really dedicated 12 hours, <laughs> you don't want to be inhaling that the whole time. Uh, I, I've just uh, uh, had a person tell me that they moved their printer to a separate room, uh, thinking that will solve the problem. And all it did is, to, uh, is, is dissuade him from printing because he now has to walk over to another room to do it. So he says he's printing less now, even though he's feeling safe. So first of all, he's not safe because every time he enters the room, he's just entering a cloud of particles. And second of all, like, like, like he said, he's doing less printing because the printer isn't next to him. He doesn't get that motivation to print more. <laughs> Well, Luke, I just want to thank you for the time that you took and talking with us. And, I mean, I wish you the best of luck here at Rapid TCT. Oh, thanks so much, Earl. I'm at the E3D booth, and I'm here with Georgia, and this is their tool changer. And, Georgia, what's going on with the tool changer? What's the progress or any updates on this wonderful platform? Yeah, absolutely. So we're really, really happy now to have recently reached Design Lock. Um, so the machine that we have here with us today is actually our production prototype. Um, and what we've got going on here is... For the last couple of shows that we went to, we actually had the machines printing, but people was, we sort of realized that people were waiting around to actually see a tool change happen, and they were just like slightly disappointed. So what we've got now is we've just set up some G-code, and it's just demonstrating the tool changes that's, that's going on there. We've got a couple of V6s. There's an inspection camera on there, which you can see down there at the front, um, and also there's a super volcano on there as well. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. The technology is great, and I, I love that you're kind of speeding up. Everybody yeah. just, you know, once <laughs> they say dance monkey to the printer, right? Yeah, this is actually slowed down as well, kind of half speed. It can go some crazy speeds, actually. Oh, how do you guys actually develop all this stuff in-house? I, I mean, this is there's a crazy amount of tech in here. What What's going on behind the scenes that allows you guys to do this? Yeah, I think 
we just have to give a massive shout out to all of our interns that we have coming in. Um, so we're constantly looking for mechanical and electrical engineers to come and work with us for whether that be just a few weeks over a summer or for a more longer period of time. I think because there's so much other work going on and especially with the tool changer we've got so many different tool heads that we want to develop so at the moment it's just a Bowden setup. It's kind of endless the amount of tools that we can create. So we're looking for interns to come in, get stuck into a project and kind of take on one of those tool heads and develop it themselves. It's a really great project for them to get stuck into. Oh, that's a great idea. So if someone was interested in that, how would they go about applying or finding out more information? Yeah, absolutely. So all they'd have to do is to just drop us an email. I think the best um, way would be email us on customer service e3donline.com and just put in the subject line that you're looking for an internship, you're interested in it, um, provide us with one of your CVs, and yeah, just kind of give a little bit of background information about yourself, what you're up to, and kind of why you'd be interested in coming to work at E3D. What about Pathio? I know you guys have that in-house developed slicer. How's that going? Yeah, it's going really well actually. Again, like I've just previously mentioned with the internships, we're always looking for people to come and work um, on the software side of things um, for Pathio as well. So again, just drop us an email, um, it'd be Pathio that you'd have to reach out to that time. But yeah, the guys are really, really happy to have some more people coming on board and helping them out with that. There's lots, lots going on, but lots, lots to be done. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, yeah. gosh, thanks, Georgia. Thanks for all the information. And uh, I hope you and E3D have a wonderful rest of Rapid. Thank you very much, Joel. And you. I'm at Rapid, of course, and I'm here at the 3D, 3Devo? Yeah. 3Devo booth, and I'm here with Tim. He's holding a bag of PLA, and we're going to talk about what he's going to do with it and why it's more awesome than something I featured on the show before. Hey, Tim. Hey, Jill. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well. I had a filament recycler on the show before, and it yeah. didn't go very well, but you have a much better solution. I'd love to hear about it. Well, I'll uh, give you the show to you. Uh, so what I'm here uh, using here is uh, some regular PLA like uh, the base material of what you would get if you buy your PLA in the shop. Uh, and I'm going to put it in the filament maker here. So what you Let's see, do it. So what you see right here uh, is the hopper. I'm going to pour in some NatureWorks PLA. And um, so what happens inside, there's an extrusion system. And uh, right at the front here, you have filament coming out. So basically, it's still warm and still soft. So I can actually touch it right here. Um, and here you can see a, uh, a filament sensor. We're actually measuring the diameter of the filament real time and then pulling it to the right thickness. So whenever printer you have, if you're 175 or 285 or anything in between, you can set your own diameter size and then the machine will pull it to its own thickness. And here on the display, you can see there are the heating zones. There are four heating zones inside. Oh, uh, okay, you have heating zones. Good, exactly. good, good. Four heating zones. Uh, we have a full uh, compression screw inside. So basically, it's a miniature version of you, what you would get when you have an industrial extrusion line. So you have uh, all the separate zones inside for compression and getting the right quality of material. And then you can put your spool in right here and it will spool it automatically, just like yeah, when you would buy your own spool of filament. Oh. oh, okay. So one of the, um, obviously, you're pulling to a certain diameter and you're adjusting real time and then you're also spooling the filament itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it happens all like as we speak. You could set the other diameter on the screen and it will regulate itself down. That's how we keep the very tight tolerance of 0.05 millimeters oh. plus minus. So that's the industry standard basically. And we do that by yeah, feeding back the optical sensor basically, so it's measuring and see, ah, is it the right thickness? No, it's not, so a little bit faster, a little bit slower, so it'll regulate itself down. And that's actually almost exactly how the bigger machines, the $100 million extrusion lines work, <laughs> only this is the baby brother of it. It's all in one, like a desktop shape, and it's also a bit more compatible. You, know, you don't need that much education or background in plastics to work with it. You can just give it a try. We do advise reading the manual, though. <laughs> Although it's not from this time, maybe, but uh, so that's... Well, well what about uh, the materials? You put natural PLA in there. I see yeah. that. But are we talking ABS, PETG, polypropylenes, polycarbonates? Yeah, so our machines are built to uh, work with a wide range of materials. So it's built, and that's also, we, 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 we build our equipment to work with high temperature materials. So what you could do, for example, is you can even run materials like PEAK, which is the highest of the highest, actually. Uh, so you can do uh, up to 450 degrees, uh, but you can also work with other materials like PSU. Uh, what is PSU? To be honest, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> now seriously, to give you an indication, like this pile of materials right here, and it's basically a compilation of all the materials that got sent to us by customers. We have a PLA with a nanocarbon, we have a, we have a ceramic plastics, or even biodegradable uh, compostable materials. There's actually 
breast implants being 3D printed that are biodegradable, so they will form into tissue, and you're actually made on this machine. And we no, have no way. You know what the weirdest question I was? So, guys, have you ever tested like a nuclear uh, material with your PLA? I was like, what? <laughs> Nuclear. Yeah, nuclear. It's like radio, no, no radio, radioactive materials. Have you? Working. No, we haven't had that <laughs> that honor yet. No, so that it even goes that far, and that that's kind of like how the 3D printing market goes. They are developing the weirdest, newest things, and I guess like with this tool, we open that up. We form the bridge between the materials and the printers. So with this machine, you can well, make your own material, but you can also give the recycling a try. So you can. Uh, yeah, choose your own waste materials. This is, uh, for example, a Gatorade uh, bottle cap. You can throw it right in here and shred it up into a uh, granulate for your 3D printer. So this is basically whenever you would want to recycle something like a, an old print, for example, but you can also go even higher. Uh, well, I, can, old... I can I can recycle my my Gatorade lids. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's like I heard you're a very good uh, big Gatorade drinker, so that works, you know. <laughs> Can I put one in? A lot of energy, of course. Yeah, yeah. This is exciting. Yeah. Ready, 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 ready. ready. It there it goes. Oh, yeah. Now it's gonna. Now it's gonna grind it up. Okay, that's fun. It's also. Uh, it's also very satisfying. So if you're ever having having a bad day, you can always just give this a try. It will lighten your mood. Okay, so all of these machines are wonderful, right? They, you've got the shredder here. You've got the extruder here. That makes the filament. Uh, what sort of price range are we looking at? Yeah, so we uh, our products are basically aimed at the business market, education market, uh, and our extruders range from around five thousand dollar to seven thousand dollars, and the shredders uh, and dryer are around three thousand um, dollars. And if you have like a combination, we have uh, some combo, combo packages you can work with. So yeah, we offer uh, yeah, a very powerful solution for what you get. Uh, basically, you get a very small industrial uh, quality machine. Um, but then uh, with the ease of use that uh, that our equipment has. So yeah. it seems like after this, the next step would be an extrusion line like Protopasta, ColorFab, and IC3D. I would imagine. Oh well, yes and no. Like you can say I want to make a lot of filaments, so I'll build a bigger line. But you can also say I want to have a lot of flexibility, and I want to switch between materials. I want to have redundancy. Oh. Let's. As an example, take the, the Prusas factory, right? I mean, you've seen pictures of that, 200 printers or 300 to the roof <laughs> printing parts. Or you could have one that's very fast, right? But they have redundancy. So whenever one printer fails or the other printer fails, they can say, okay, switch to another one. So we built the machine to be as autonomous as possible. So uh -huh. you can choose to say, okay, I want to have three or four up and running parallel to each other. Uh, and I can switch between materials, have uh, lower material quantities to start with. To give you an example, like if you want to start up a line, like uh, like the bigger extrusion line, you need something like five, maybe ten, maybe even twenty kilograms to start up the entire line to get all the material out. And with us, you need something like two hundred grams. And for PLA, you know that doesn't matter. But when you start using some sort of nano carbon diamonds uh, material, those two hundred grams matter. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, Tim, I want to say thank you for giving me a little bit of an education here. It's really exciting to know that there are options out there other than the one that I tested on my channel, and I want to give you one of those. Oh, and I want yeah. to say, have a good rest of Rapid. Yeah, you too. And have a lovely, great day here, uh, the last days of Rapid. For us, it's the first time in the US, so we're very happy and we feel very welcome as well to be here. Wow. So, welcome to Detroit. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> At Rapid, you expect to see a lot of industrial and professional level companies, but I'm standing here at the Matter Hackers booth, who's been known to deal with the maker community and just the community-based 3D printing specialists and hobbyists and whatnot. And Daniel here is going to tell me why Matter Hackers is at an industrial and professional show. Hey, Daniel. Hi, how's it going? Why is Matter Hackers here, essentially? So Matter Hackers is known for all things desktop 3D printing, and uh, we've got something really to offer for everyone. And uh, we are definitely trying to step up and do more things in the industrial uh, engineering grade. So we've got here an Ultimaker S5, which is fantastic. It's got water-soluble support material, along with a BCN 3D, which is, again, dual extrusion. So uh, we've recently started onboarding materials such as, like, Peak and Ultim for really high-temperature printing. Oh, you've got Peak and Ultim? Yes. We've recently added Peak and Ultim to our lineup. So uh, 
Uh, we also have our Nylon X, which a lot of people know us for, uh, Nylon G, which is its, uh, I guess, glass reinforced cousin. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have just been expanding. Uh, recently, we added also BASF, so we've got uh, their materials as well as DuPont. So, uh, what, are BAS what are BASF and DuPont bringing to the table as far as materials? Um, so they're bringing a couple variations of nylon as well as some uh, polypropylenes. Uh, oh. We've gotten a lot of requests for just really specific materials, and so our goal is, again, to offer something for every use case. And so uh, we think by, again, bringing them on, we will be able to uh, have something for uh, any use case, really. Oh, I see. So the idea is if you're a hobbyist, garage tinker, you can go to Matter Hackers and get supplies. Yes. But also, if you are a Fortune 500 company, if you're a multi-million dollar global entity, Matter Hackers, if need be, could still service what you need for 3D printing. Yes, absolutely. So again, our goal is to have something for everybody. We're seeing more and more industrial companies using smaller desktop 3D printing because they're getting more and more capable, more and more precise. And uh, a lot of engineers are actually having these desktop 3D printers on their, on their desk, and they use them to get more and more close to their final product, and then maybe they'll take that and use one of the metal 3D printers that you know are so available here. Oh, that's cool. Well, this is great information to know, and if you are an industrial customer, you can always go shopping at Matter Hackers, but I have a question for Daniel here, because yeah. he may look familiar to many of you. Daniel, what is your channel, and how could someone find the awesome content that you make? Uh, so my channel is going to be Modbot. If you uh, go to YouTube and just search Modbot, you can find my channel. Um, I've you know, I've been 3D printing for about five years now, and I'm uh, really passionate about the technology. So, uh, yeah, that's where you can find me at. Thanks for the interview, Daniel. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Have a good rapid. You as well. Thank you so much. That was a bunch of fun, right? I do want to say a big quick thanks to Flashforge for bringing us out to Rapid TCT 2019. I'm here next to the Tool Changer, which is just hypnotic to watch, and I hope you enjoyed George's little talk about it. Hey, you know what? If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all, as always. High five.